today on 21st Century Television. Join us as we explore innovative technologies, cutting edge solutions, and timely discussions from leaders across the globe. Featuring guest host Donald Trump Jr. This is 21st Century Television. Welcome to 21st Century Television. I'm Donald Trump Jr. 24 hours a day and 365 days a year, ships are transporting goods to all corners of the globe. And with the rising cost of fuel and environmental concerns, more and more businesses are making the cleaner and more affordable choice to literally ship their goods. Joining us today to discuss the advantage of shipping cargo via the sea is CEO Joe Sanders and Mark Marling, Executive Vice President of Terrace Cargo Transport. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Don. Pleasure to be here. It's good to be here. Joe, tell us about some of the challenges that come with the more traditional forms of transport, such as land and air. Well, the first problem with land and air and the challenge that they face uh, usually is involving the size and the weight of the cargo. Uh, sometimes the size is not conducive to going down a highway or fitting into an airplane. The second problem is uh, more and more today, airports aren't built where the projects are. Uh, and roads don't go there. Mark, how does Terrace address some of these transportation and logistical challenges? Terrace is a, more of a um, marine solutions company. We look at uh, a problem that a customer has, where they need to move the goods to, and then we dissect what the issues are. It may be that they uh, don't have roads, as Joe mentioned, or it might be that it's cheaper, more efficient to move it uh, uh, up a river, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll find the right solution, the right material, um, the right equipment to get it there. So uh, that can mean a big ocean um, vessel going to a traditional port, or it can mean a, uh, a hovercraft or a barge up a uh, shallow draft river. We sent our camera crews on location to see Terrace Cargo Transport in action. Let's take a look. The transportation industry is facing many challenges, which include the rising cost of shipping, fuel, and compliance with regulations, combined with the general business practice of driving down costs. Terrace Cargo takes a more innovative approach, looking for new ways to combat old problems, and provides creative transportation and logistics solutions. Terrace Cargo Transport is a full-service marine transport and logistics service provider and a trusted partner to the oil and gas, energy, mining, minerals, and infrastructure industries, providing shipping services worldwide. With offices in Gig Harbor, Washington, Singapore, Houston, Texas, Port Mosby, Papua New Guinea, Australia, South Africa, Norfolk, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Kansas City, Missouri, and San Francisco, California. Terrace Cargo Transport can offer a full range of cargo transportation services from site to site, which can include project management for each location. Terrace Cargo Transport also maintains and operates a versatile and diverse fleet of vessels, including barges, tugs and support vessels, landing crafts, jack-up rigs and lift boats, roll-on, roll-off and heavy lift vessels that can handle any project from basic cargo to the most extreme transport challenges. Joe, tell us a little bit about the vessels that you guys actually operate. We have what we would consider uh, more of a permanent fleet that is made up of traditional vessels uh, that are equipped with heavy lift uh, gear for high white and heavy cargoes. These vessels are U.S. flagged and they're manned by U.S. Uh, merchant marines uh, and governed by U.S. law. Uh, we also have a, a more permanent fleet of uh, tug barges. Uh, and these are project built uh, for extremely heavy cargoes, um, such as modular construction of LNG plants. The rest of the fleet fills out with um, project-specific uh, requirements uh, where we bring in the particular type of equipment that we need to do the job. So Mark, it doesn't sound like there's a one-ship-fits-all approach at Terrace. Would that be a fair statement? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's, that's who and what we are. Uh, I think that traditionally, uh, steamship lines uh, offered a traditional type of service. We don't do that. Uh, as I said before, we look at uh, the situation and we find the, uh, the right craft to do the job. And that means um, a wide-ranging fleet for wide-ranging problems. Joe, tell us about some of the more complex logistical challenges that you've tackled. Well, there's been a few uh, over the years, uh, but most recently I think of the bridge that was somewhat damaged during a storm in the Pacific Northwest. 
Uh, this is a floating bridge, um, concrete, reinforcement, uh, and so forth, and uh, served the state well for 50 years, uh, but uh, ended up being damaged in a, in a major storm. So it was uh, set to the side for about two years, um, and uh, we were aware of it, but wasn't really interested in, in the bridge. Uh, then, in developing an idea on Melville Island in Australia, um, the Tiwi Nation uh, is landlocked. They need a port, um, couldn't afford one. Uh, quite frankly, uh, the, the budget wasn't there to do a traditional port. Um, and there was some uh, issues involving the construction that just happens to be uh, a, a local, uh, local problem with the geology. So a floating port uh, would be the solution. Uh, we looked into taking this bridge, we bought it, uh, we refurbished it. Uh, the sections are 360 feet long, 50 feet wide. 15 feet deep and they weigh 5,000 tons each. And I was somewhat concerned about how we were going to make this work. And uh, Understandably. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, we ended up uh, figuring that out, taking it to a shipyard in uh, Vancouver, BC, uh, having the work done there uh, to turn those pontoons into a usable cargo dock. But then we had the three sections and we had them in Vancouver, BC and they needed to be in Melville, Australia. At the end of the day, uh, the largest, uh, or one of the largest ships, it's, it's quite large, um, specialized uh, to do semi-submersible work, uh, where the deck goes below the, the, the sea. Uh, and we floated those three sections uh, simultaneously alongside each other. That's 150 feet wide, 15,000 tons, and um, they transported them across the ocean, uh, delivered them to the local community, which obviously had never seen anything quite that large. Uh, we floated them off and, and basically they were uh, presented with a international dock uh, capable of doing deep water operations uh, for a substantial um, reduction in the cost. And today they're, they're, uh, they're ready to get started with uh, their capabilities uh, that the dock brings. So this is one of the few natural deep water ports in this part of Australia. In fact, it's the only one. We're not required to dredge here because the currents run strong enough that it just keeps the uh, channel flushed out. We're very excited about this. The port is just becoming operational now um, and we're talking to a number of oil and gas clients and uh, military for pos potential use of the facility. Well, you can see that the structure is very robust. It's heavy built. The fendering system that you're seeing alongside here is designed to accommodate ships up to 50,000 deadweight tons. Essentially, these, uh, they call them Yokohama fenders, are designed to cushion the ship and uh, avoid damage between the ship and, and the dock. All of the dolphins are heavy grade steel, all built to Australian standards. And I think this dock is just about the strongest dock in Australia by a factor of two. Quite frankly, in, in the beginning, there was some hesitation that what we were envisioning could actually happen, but with encouragement uh, that if we all work together, the signing that occurred yesterday was proof that it can uh, work out. The Terrace is one of several operating companies, wholly owned uh, subsidiary of Ezion Holdings, Singapore listed company. Our role here in Australia is to develop business. It's part of our social commitment to all operating areas. We've partnered here to develop indigenous and disadvantaged youth, and that comprises the largest share of our workforce here in Australia since 2009. Terrace and Ezion are bringing a new style of working with indigenous people, and that is not just dealing with Aboriginal people for the sake of dealing with it, but dealing with Aboriginal people to be real partners about um, taking a risk, um, working with Aboriginal people. We don't see enough of big international, multinational companies uh, working with grassroots um, Indigenous groups as equals to be able to build us as well as build the commercial opportunities for everyone. So I think this is a significant investment and it'll pay off in the long run 
because this is unique in that it's Aboriginal freehold land. So Aboriginal people, traditional owners, have a lot of authority and power and to be able to reach an agreement where a major investor can come in, spend money to develop a major project and give certainty to the project for everyone is really important for the local community to participate in it as business partners, as equals and give jobs and training so the community can grow with these opportunities as well. We'll be looking forward to, to do something for, for the Tiwi people and just like anybody else. You know, do something for, for, for your lives and, and for, the, for the people of that, that community. You know, we, we need something like that, it's something that uh, my people would like to see in the future. It's not about handouts, what we do is we provide job opportunities and training. We don't train for the sake of training, we provide training to develop people. And we like to think that actually what we're doing is providing, providing careers. I think Terrace Australia and, um, and the rest of the ESEON group are going to be leading examples and its way of working with Indigenous people. We hope the example set by here of working with traditional owners can be an example around the world uh, where we can build disadvantaged communities um, so they can participate as equals in any business opportunities with our group of companies. Terrace prides itself on being one of the best marine operators in the business. They engage only experienced, well-trained and dedicated crews to provide services that are certain to raise the efficiency and the effectiveness of any project, like the Marine Terminal Project on Melville Island. We have two prime initiatives going on here in the Northern Territory. One is a marine supply base at the mouth of Hudson Creek, just around the corner from East Arm Wharf. This is uh, one of the places where we provide on-the-job training for our Indigenous workforce. Now that marine supply base, we have regular uh, scheduled uh, cargo deliveries to the Tiwi Islands at present, hope to expand those operations. We've recently introduced the only double hull bunker vessel into the Northern Territory. That's manned up 50% with Indigenous trainees and crew. Our second initiative is the development of Port Melville. Port Melville, we expect, will be declared an international port. We just recently uh, received the Gazettel for the port, and we will open business very shortly for international clientele. And due to its proximity to the rapidly emerging oil and gas projects around Australia and its proximity to the trade lanes, Connecting Australia with the Asian markets, we expect that uh, it's going to represent some strategic and economic advantage to the users. Terrace Cargo has the experience, expertise and creativity to save money and uses an innovative approach to solve transportation problems effectively and efficiently. Terrace looks to the customer's needs and then crafts a custom solution to meet those needs. Well, Terrace uh, provides solutions. Usually we, we try to find the ones that no one else has been able to do. In this case, the budgetary restraints and the time restraints that was part of the conditions here at Melville dictated a unique solution, uh, which you're standing on. This was the Hood Canal Bridge. You probably know at this point it was uh, converted in British Columbia, uh, Canada, and put on one of the largest ships in the world. It floated 14,000 miles and plopped here and uh, installed in just under a year. For that to occur, you know, as they build the spec, wouldn't happen. Joe, how does Terra serve as a partner to EPCs and energy companies on the development of energy production projects around the world? Partner is the key word there and, and early is the second factor. Uh, we get invited sometimes to the earliest possible means of their decision making in deciding whether or not a project is feasible. The, uh, the progress moving forward is more of a partnership. This develops into a much better uh, product and although many of the uh, companies in, involved are bound by competitive bid and sole sourcing is not, not normal in our industry, the process of deciding how to do a job in many cases benefits from uh, having a, a transportation uh, marine specialist uh, on the early, early phases of a, of, a, of a job. Mark, one of the big things you read about today is piracy on the seas. What is Terrace doing to prevent that 
So, uh, you know, piracy is, is an issue. It's come into the public spotlight through movies like Captain Phillips, uh, but it's been uh, an age-old problem. There was a dramatic uptick in piracy um, starting in about 2007, 2008, and the nature of piracy changed a little bit from uh, just boarding vessels and taking uh, goods and money to all of a sudden kidnapping crews and holding uh, vessels ransom. Uh, terrorists and uh, uh, lots of other transportation companies have really uh, worked well with uh, the world's coast guards and navies to change the way we do things. So today we put armed guards on our vessels when we transit certain uh, piracy infested waters, if you will. Uh, we deploy uh, countermeasures and evasive maneuvers. Uh, we um, sail through certain areas as part of a convoy protected by the world's navies. And um, as a result, the uh, rates of piracy have fallen in 2013 uh, from a high, I think in 2011, of over uh, almost 500 um, attacks to uh, 264 with 11 successful boardings by, by pirates. So that's a pretty dramatic drop in the last two years. Mm. Um, obviously, the, what we're doing is working, uh, but it's a problem that you know, obviously uh, continues to plague uh, the industry and the world and uh, continue to take efforts to uh, stamp it out. Working on the Houston with terrorists, uh, most ships go from point A to point B, then back to point A again. This ship, you never know where you're going. Terrorists' commitment to security on the vessel, especially when we're in high-risk waters off of Oman, uh, off of Somalia, is we have security protocols that we use, razor wire, lockdown, uh, drills and such, and the company has always given us a security team in these waters, starting from the Suez Canal to when we relieve high-risk waters. They're brought on board, they have weapons, and they are here for us. When you know you got a guy on board who's able to handle situations like this that traditionally sailors don't normally do anymore, it makes you feel much better. And this crew adapts really well to the protocols and certain rule restrictions. They feel much, much better and they get a lot of things done. Quite frankly, it relieves me of a lot of headache or stress that would be going through the water by myself. Mark, what are the biggest obstacles to the U.S. flag fleet? And what help does the industry really need from the U.S. government? Well, you know, I think that, like any industry, uh, finding a uh, talented workforce, educated workforce, is um, the lifeblood to almost any business. And uh, that's very true, especially in, for us in the U.S. flag business. So finding U.S. seafarers, and that means education. There is a federal national maritime academy at Kings Point. There are state maritime academies throughout the country. You know, the U.S. government needs to continue to support and fund those academies so we can find talented young seafarers to put on our vessels. Terrace is providing an opportunity for the youth and we're fairly proud of that to uh, be able to take them through a training process that actually provides them more than just a job. It's, it's, it's really a, a career and if they stay with it they will be able to work anywhere in the world quite frankly. Uh, Terrace seems to have a good commitment to education with the Maritime Academies. We've had several groups of cadets here from both the Federal Academy Kings Point and also we've had cadets from New York Maritime uh, and it all depends on what their schedule is and how it fits into the ship schedule but overall they seem to have a good commitment to trying to get cadets in aboard and to uh, learn the trade especially on a heavy left vessel. Terrace has a policy through a company called AMSI, which we work with as well, to collect cadets to bring to this ship. Uh, it's a great way for kids coming into the industry to see a different kind of shipping than tankers or uh, A to B type shipping. This is something they need, they have to think about something different every single time you come into port, which teaches these kids a lot, which they will rarely get out in the real world of shipping. Joe, how does the U.S. flag fleet in general, and for Terra specifically, partner with the U.S. military and U.S. government, and what does it benefit to the public sector? Well, a healthy merchant fleet has always been important in the history of the country, and it still remains so. The partnership with 
the military probably speaks for itself. Uh, the support of non-military goods, um, these are all done primarily by uh, merchant marines. Uh, to have that fleet become smaller uh, is, is, in my belief, very dangerous uh, because uh, the uh, amount of cargo that's moved by sea has not diminished. The partnership uh, involving, and we have one ship, by the way, um, uh, uh, chartered to the military uh, for, for dedicated service, and then we participate with all of our other uh, assets um, when required. The partnership with probably the two largest uh, entities I can think of is, is the USDA, USAID, uh, and the XM Bank. These are both very important parts of the U.S. plan, uh, you know, for uh, development of U.S. made goods and distribution throughout the, the world. And then on the USDA side, the uh, distribution of U.S. agricultural goods in many cases uh, humanitarian or disaster relief. In both cases, you need a very healthy, viable merchant fleet. Well, in terms of dignitaries, we work very closely with the NT government and the federal government. They like what we're doing. Uh, we, they like what we have to offer and uh, they've given us very good support and guidance. Uh, it's enabled us to be able to fast track some of our uh, investment initiatives here in Australia. The American Merchant Marine is probably one of the safest rule-oriented merchant marines in the, in the world. We follow the rules a lot better. We're rule-bound. Our attitude toward pollution, our attitude toward the environment, our attitude toward safety, it's all being ingrained into this merchant marine that we have now, and it becomes second nature. Uh, I believe Terrace is very committed to the U.S. merchant marine. They, they've taken these ships and reflagged them into the U.S. fleet, so it gives us more jobs, I'm trying to keep everybody working. We've been everywhere picking up cargo and bringing it to the States. They could flag a ship in any country, but you know, they picked the United States because we do have some of the top-notch seafarers in the world. I believe they recognize that and are committed to keeping us working. Joe, where in the world is Terrace looking as the next big opportunity for U.S.-based business? We're not limited by the size of the globe. The water stretches uh, to many locations and, and our skill sets are as good in one country usually as, as in the other country. We have projects uh, 40 miles from our corporate office and we have projects uh, halfway around the world. Uh, that we're looking at today. And some are in progress and some are uh, planned for the near future. Personally, I, I have my eye on Africa. Uh, it's an emerging uh, market, has been for years, uh, although the stability seems to be better and uh, getting better. So the opportunity for their growth and their development as a uh, shipping country is now. And so we find that the need is there and the infrastructure isn't. Uh, and if it is there, it's somewhat aged, and they are making very positive gains in improving those, but there's a process, and only the large ports usually get improvements first. The country is quite large, and, and so we find the rivers, we find the opportunities uh, where there's very little infrastructure to, to provide service. Mark, how is Terrace different from your competitors? You know, I'm not sure that we have competitors. Uh, we have, um, <laughs> is that good to hear? <laughs> good we answer. <laughs> Next. <laughs> we have people who are, uh, there are people who are traditional steamship lines, but we're not. We are truly a marine solutions company. We look at logistical challenges and find ways to, to combat them. And we try to work with our uh, customers, our partners, on their full logistics plan, uh, you know, to support their project from uh, beginning to end, from the early works, and uh, you know they move into an area that doesn't have any roads, any infrastructure at all, until the point that they are bringing in modular construction LNG plants or whatever it is that they're moving in, and that uh, we can uh, support them and, and work with them to find those solutions. So I think that's the the big difference. Uh, the traditional maritime transportation company has um, a bunch of assets and they're trying to throw cargo on it, maybe almost like trucking on water. And we look instead to say, what is the problem? And let us help you craft a solution. Then we'll find the right vessel to make it happen. So Mark, understanding that Terrace employees are scattered all around the world, what are the benefits to the company of having a team of telecommuting professionals? We're a small company. Uh, some may even say we're, we're, we're still almost a startup. And we're very entrepreneurial. Uh, that means that our people need to be everywhere. But we also want to attract um, 
the best talent. And I will tell you that Terrace has some of the finest professionals in marine transportation that are out there. You can't tell these people, well, you need to pick up and move to, say, where we have bricks and mortar operations in um, Washington or Texas. If they are happy living in San Francisco or in uh, Tampa, Florida. So instead, uh, we say you can live where you want to live. Uh, the fact of the matter is most of our people are traveling to all points around the world on a regular basis. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And, uh, you know, technology, cell yeah. phones, laptops, uh, Skype. I mean, it's all, it all allows for seamless communications, and uh, we all talk on a regular basis, and uh, that lets us have our people live where they want to live, and uh, we get the talent that we're looking for to help grow our company. So, Joe, in the broad picture, what does the future of shipping look like? Well, I believe it's got a, a bright future, uh, and as usual, though, it's, it's connected to those that will adapt. You've seen in your lifetime, as I have, many changes in the way that uh, products are, are delivered to and from uh, different countries. The primary difference today is there is a nation out there ready to supply the rest of the world with a product. That wasn't the case 20 years ago, uh, and many of those uh, countries are providing services uh, with the LNG, for instance, uh, that produce modules that can only be moved by, by water and can only be moved to um, a specific location that is designed for handling those kinds of products. So I think if you're willing to adapt to what the new rules are, you'll do fine. Thanks a lot for joining me here today. Thanks for asking. That was great. For 21st Century Television, I'm Donald Trump Jr. Thanks for watching.